Hey everyone, in this video we're going to cover the 60 year history of the city of Ottawa and we're also going to cover the 2021 prediction, so make sure you stay tuned to the end. But first, show reel, hit it! So in today's video, we're going to cover three areas for the city of Ottawa in real estate. And we're basically looking at the past, the present, and the future. And because we're near the holidays, this is really focused on the, the ghost of Christmas past, the ghost of Christmas present, and the ghost of Christmas future because of Uncle Scrooge. So in this video, we're going to focus on three key areas for the real estate market for Ottawa. We're going to focus on the six year history. So we're going to focus on the past. We're gonna focus on the present, basically 2018, 2019, 2020, and what's happening currently in the marketplace. And then we're gonna focus on the future, which is actually 2021, and what is city's plans for the future development of where we're going. So there we go, guys. Now let's cover these numbers. Let's look at the 60 year history of the city of Ottawa. It's so interesting. We're gonna pull the slide up on the screen right now, and I should take a look at all these price points. And you see, we go right back to 1956, when the average cost of a home was $13,351. That's almost like some property taxes right now for some properties. But as we go through it, you'll see that there's a pattern that emerges. You'll see in 61 and 62, the actual prices went down. There was a government turnover at that point. And we see the same that actually happens in 1994, 95, and 96, where there was a government changeover. There were some layoffs and that made some insecurities in the marketplace. And of course, the home prices actually went down. But you'll see every other year it actually went up, which is really interesting. You can dial into some of these times, such as 2008 when the housing crisis in the US didn't even affect Ottawa. Ottawa is such an insulated real estate market. It is really such a unique anomaly in North America, maybe even the world in terms of its real estate values. But you'll see every year it's gone up, year over year growth. And what you will see is there's a seven year economic market cycle as it spikes. And as it spikes, you'll see it grows for two or three years and it'll plateau back out and every two to three points it goes up again and then it goes back up again in a spike and it comes back down again. So that natural evolution of a home price growth is an amazing thing. It's made Ottawa this very, very strong market to invest in. Now, what we see is that growth has actually attracted a lot of investors. So people from the larger markets in Canada are starting to see Ottawa as this hidden gem of an opportunity to actually see the value of the homes grow. Now, as we get through to 2017, 2018, and 2019, we see this perfect storm forming. And what I mean by that is the last few years, we're starting to ramp up into one of those natural economic cycles of a seven year to 10 year spike. But what is happening here are some interesting banking regulations take place. So 2018, some major banking regulations came out, which flooded the market with a lot of pre-approvals for buyers. And new home buyers were set on the market and they wanted to buy. At the same time, there was a lack of inventory. Not many homes came in into that situation. In 2019, 2020, we started seeing the banks put out the stress test situation, which actually pushed people down into a lower price bracket from a purchase affordability. And at the same time, no inventory came. So the basics of market and demand, supply and demand, we see a very high level of demand and very low level of supply. So we're starting to build this perfect seller's market. At the same time, we actually see that we have historical low interest rates. We haven't seen interest rates like this for a long, long time, and we may never see them again for a long time. At the same time, as the low inventory has continued, the interest rates have continued to drop. We have the COVID situation that came in, COVID-19 and the pandemic. We actually thought some people were thinking that the market would, would fall down, but what we actually see is the housing prices have actually gone up. They've actually increased in value. As people were sent home during a pandemic, they were sent to the most important investment of their lives, which was their property. We also see some other factors that come into play. We see a migration of people from different larger urban areas in the Canada. We see Vancouver and we see Toronto people coming into the Ottawa market because they see it's an opportunity to afford a property, whereas in those areas, it's just become very unaffordable for families to have that lifestyle. We also see a large, influx of immigration into Ottawa, where naturally they may have gone to other cities 
Ottawa has become a very popular hub for this immigration. So it's driven up this demand again. So we have people coming from large centers. We have immigration coming in. We have historically low interest rates. We have no inventory coming in the marketplace and we have massive demand to buy homes. This has just set this seller's market a frenzy. As we dial more into these numbers, it's really interesting to take a look at. As we look into the slides here, we can actually see that in 2017 to 2018, we've seen this growth pattern of a 3.9% growth in the actual average sales price. But what we also see is a 2.2% in terms of inventory. That's interesting because there's not a lot of inventory in the 2018 to 2019 timeframe, but we see this, this increase in, in rate, which is on par with what Ottawa typically has in terms of its growth year over year. So let's dig in these numbers. We're looking at 27 to 2018 and we get really specific here. Here we actually see the growth rate of a 3.9% over that period. And that's a natural growth period for Ottawa year over year. It's always been a healthy market that always is always growing. And yet the inventory of the number of sales was only a 2.2% growth. So the value of that actually grow a little bit. So there's more inventory that was happening during that time frame. Now, as we fast forward to the next slide, we're looking at 2018 versus 2019. And that's where things start to really build for this seller's market. We see the number of sales has grown 6.7% from uh, 18,000, just over 18,000, all the way up to 19,316. But then we also see the average sale price growing from at, up to 8.2%. Now, interesting, as we go to the next time period, we're looking at 2019 to 2020, still in that seller's market. So we're seeing the price starting to ramp up in 2019, 2018 and 2019. Now we're seeing 2019 to 2020 is now up 18.8%. So it's just taken off in this seller's market. And then if you look at the number of sales, we see it's only at 0.5. So there's that lack of inventory coming in the marketplace. So we're building as a natural flow, the inventory rates are dropping off, the supply isn't there, and the demand is pumping up. So we actually see this, uh, this growth rate of 18.8%, which is really, really interesting. Now, what does the future hold? And that's the question everyone's asking. Nobody really has a crystal ball to understand it, but if history is true, we see that there's a 60 year history of the city of Ottawa growth year over year has always gone up. And the only market conditions that have affected the Ottawa market has been government related because we're such a government town. It's the largest employer. So if that government is still stable and we see the interest rates are gonna hold down, we're seeing a lot of reports come out that that interest rates will maintain at its current level. So if we're still at the same kind of historically low interest rates for the next foreseeable future we're hearing indications of a year to two certainly in Canada in the US they've actually come out and said they're gonna hold it for three years at that rate if that's the case we'll have certainly low interest rates we will have buyer demand still strong which means prices should continue to grow and as we see in the next slide this is the Remax market outlook this is the housing market outlook and as you see in different cities we'll see a growth in Vancouver of 11.4 percent we see Victoria growing at 11%. We see places like uh, Nanaimo, BC at up 8%. Calgary is actually down 6%. They have been a bit of a struggle with their market right now for oil and gas, the energy market. And of course that affects their housing market. But as we look into Toronto looking to grow at 12% apparently, Oakville growing at 13.9%. But look at Ottawa. We've highlighted that there for you in the slide. We're seeing a 19.2% growth rate forecasted by Remax for the year 2021. So we have this growth of a 3% up to 8.9% and now we're at a 19.2% next year in 2021. Now locally, uh, we've looked at the Ottawa stats and they're coming out saying it's gonna be around 11 to 12%. So if that's the case, we're probably somewhere in there, 11 to 12% up to 19%, we're gonna see a growth of next year. So history repeats itself because we see a 60 year history of the city of Ottawa growing year over year. And then when we have these seven to 10 year spikes where they spike up and then they come back down again, there's natural uh, an incline to go up to around the 20%, 18 to 20% growth. And then it plateaus down a little bit and then comes back down to a calm, steady pace for their seven to 10 years, and then it spikes again. So if history repeats itself, we might be in the same situation. We might see that growth rate of 18.9% last year, in this year, 2020, but then in 2021, we'll probably see a bit of a come down a little bit, and then it'll start to calm down a bit and grow into its natural wave again. 
So what's the future hold for Ottawa? It's really interesting because Ottawa is a massive geographical area and there was just a recent City of Ottawa meeting where they came together to actually discuss and look at the influx of people that are coming into Ottawa to see if the city can currently handle it. And right now they've actually decided to expand the geographical area of Ottawa. In May 2020, City Council approved to expand the current urban boundary by between 1,350 and 1,650 hectares between 2021 and 2046. That's a lot of space. And actually what we look at is that by 2045, 51% of the new houses will be built in the existing urban areas, with the intensification target rising to 60% by 2046. The remaining 49% of the growth will be within the expanded boundary. So what does that mean? It means that the city of Ottawa has already a large geographical area. There's a widespread area, and if you look at the city of Ottawa, it's an interesting layout because from the Parliament Hill out, you'll see these rings of development from 1930s, 40s, 50s, and 60s. By the time we got to the 70s and 80s, there was a natural green belt that was put in place by the National Capital Commission. This was protected wetland and nature trail area that surrounded the city of Ottawa. And outside of that, from the 70s, 80s, and 90s on, you see developments in the suburban areas, uh, Orleans in the east, Canada and Stittsville in the west, and Bar Haven, and eventually Mantic in the south. So we have this expansion that's happening, continuing outside the green belt area, because we have such a large geographical widespread uh, scope. But with that wide scope, it's still actually being expanded to allow more suburban area development as well as urban intensification in the core. And what we see on the slide on your screen right now is this is actually a geographical representation of the proper city areas of Calgary, Edmonton, Toronto, Montreal, and Vancouver overlaid the city of Ottawa map. This just shows you how massive the city of Ottawa really is in terms of its geographical spread. And we're still going to expand that to take the influx. This is looking at bringing in more people that are coming from these city urban cores. We're also seeing the immigration coming to Ottawa. So what does that mean for the future of Ottawa? What it means is that we're actually going to drive up the value of the homes. So home prices will continue to grow. We have a 60 year history showing the growth year over year, except for any government turnover in 61 and 62 and 1993, 94, 95. But every other year we see it grow. We see these spikes happen every seven to 10 years. We see this uh, perfect storm of a seller's market that we're currently in right now. And we see predictions showing that the values are gonna continue to grow. And as the city continues to expand with all these different influxes of, 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 of elements, we're actually gonna see that value of the home continue to grow. So it's a great place to invest in terms of the long term. If someone's looking to invest one or two years, it's probably not the smart play, but if you take your time and you purchase a property, it will grow year over year and we'll see that return on investment. So there you guys have it, the 60 year history of the city of Ottawa and the 2021 predictions coming up for your investment. If you're thinking about making a move to Ottawa, feel free to reach out to us. Give us a call, shoot us a text, send us an email, even wrap it up in a bow and send it first class because we got your back. We're moving to Ottawa or anywhere across Canada. And each and every week we're bringing brand new videos just like this one. So make sure to tap that subscribe button and click the bell so you're notified each and every time we do a brand new video. And until next time, take care.